Pastor Dean, and thank you for joining me today for our online service here at Velocity Church. I am so glad that you're watching with us today. And uh, there's a lot going on through this coronavirus, but I'm praying for you and I'm thinking about you, and I want to share some encouraging things with you in a few minutes. I'm going to be sharing about four ways how you can stay spiritually connected in a physically disconnected world. But a couple of things I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to leave a comment, say hello, let me know you're watching, uh, share a prayer request, um, share just uh, some things that are on your heart, where you're watching us from. I want to know you're watching. And the second thing I want you to know is this. We've created on our website, if you go to velocitychurch.cc, we've created a page. When you go to our website, you'll see a page there. It'll, it'll say COVID, COVID-19. Uh, and it'll say our response. And then there, what you'll find, you'll find a place uh, there's a form for you to fill out if you have a prayer request or if you have a need or you know someone who has a need and we want to help uh, pray for those things and also to fill those needs. Uh, we want to help there. And also on the bottom of that page, there's a lot of resources. Uh, there's some worship songs that I create some links for you. And also there are some um, outreach ideas. There's a link there on how to give online. We want to encourage you to continue to give. And uh, so anyway, I want to share one other thing before we really get it started today is this. I want to let you know that uh, today we're not having live worship. Uh, we're not having worship online. But what I do want you to do is uh, go, to our, go to our website. And again, go to the bottom of the page. It says resources on the very bottom. And I want you just to take a few minutes. Uh, it's what I'm going to do. It's what everyone that watching is going to do right now. I just want you to spend just a few minutes in worship. I want you to select. There's a song there called Waymaker. And it's just been one of my favorite worship songs over the last few minutes. Uh, sorry, the last few months, and uh, but I want you to listen into that video and just enter into a few minutes of worship, and then we'll come back and talk in just a few minutes. So go to our website, www.velocitychurch.cc. The first page will open. You'll scroll near the bottom of the page. It'll say resources, and then there you'll see where it says worship songs, and find the song that says Waymaker, and listen to that, and then when you're done, We'll be back, and I share those four ways how you can how you can stay spiritually connected in a physically disconnected world. God bless you. Let's worship together. Awesome! I love that song. God is a way maker. He is a peacemaker. I'm so excited what God's doing in our life. I know it's a a crazy time right now, but I am putting my hope, my trust in the Lord. And so, anyway, let's pray today, and then we're gonna jump into the Word of God. And I want to share some things with you today, uh, but let me pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that we can trust you and that, God, that you have everything under control. The Lord, that fear, we don't need to listen to the spirit of fear, but Lord, we understand we put our hope in you and our trust in you, Jesus. We thank you that you're the author of power, peace, love, and a sound mind, that you're not the author of fear. We thank you for that in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody said, amen. Put in your comments, amen. Uh, anyway, one of the first things I want to share with you today, how you can stay spiritually connected in a physically disconnected world is this, is that you need to feed your faith and not feed your fear. It's so easy to feed your fear right now by all the, the, uh, the news that's going on and everything online and fear that's going out. They're talking about the timeline. It could, this coronavirus could last days, weeks, months. Uh, school could be canceled, it may be canceled, may not be canceled. Anyway, there's just a lot of fear. But I love what Psalm, 1, what Psalm 91, verse 1 through 16, it says this. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. I love that. He is your refuge. He is my refuge. My place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. For He will rescue from every trap and protect you from, from deadly disease, like the coronavirus. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. 
They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. I love that. I know there's so much there in Psalm 91, but it's a reminder to, uh, to all of us that God is our protection. When we learn to trust him and that he becomes our refuge and that safe place that we all run to. I, I love uh, growing up, my grandfather had uh, chickens and uh, my brother had chickens, but I love that, you know, when it would begin to rain and all the little chicks would come running under the mother because they knew that the mother would go and protect them. And the same thing our Heavenly Father does that, you know, we go run into Him when we have fear in our heart and we find protection in Him and in His Word and listening to the Holy Spirit. So the first thing how we stay spiritually connected is by learning to trust God and feeding our faith and not feeding our fear. And the second way that we, uh, that we stay spiritually connected is that we need to fast and pray. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 through 15 says this, And we are confident that He hears us when we ask for anything that pleases Him. And since we know He hears us when we make our request, we also know that He will give us what we ask for. We need everyone to join us. I want every person to join us uh, when it comes to fasting and praying. And uh, on Wednesdays, from Wednesday morning until Thursday morning, we're going on a 24-hour fast. And I want you to join me in that fast. It's so important. Whatever we ask, in Jesus' name, if it lines up with His will, that uh, they promise us in First John that uh, that He will answer us. There's a couple of things we're we're praying for and that we're we're fasting for, and you can actually find these on our website again under the resources. I, I put a little link. It says uh, fasting uh, fasting topics or people we're fasting for. Uh, just look for it. You can find it there. But a couple of areas that we're praying and fasting for. We're praying for a spiritual awakening, for revival and healing in our land. I believe that God wants to use this time and in, in, uh, in, our, in our nation and around the world that we get our eyes back on Jesus and our hearts back on Him. But we're praying for a spiritual awakening. We're praying for those people who feel afraid and alone. And there's a lot of people around us. Maybe you're watching today. You feel maybe afraid or you feel alone. We want to pray for those people. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for the sick, for people that have weakened immune systems. There's a lot of people around us. Maybe they're not even aware that they have a weakened immune system. But we want to pray for them. We want to pray for the scientists who are developing a, pu a cure a cure to the coronavirus. We want to pray that God gives them the wisdom as they're doing their research. We want to pray for our healthcare workers and first responders who are dealing with the sick every day. We want to pray for employees and business owners who are experiencing loss of a job, a loss of a business, or a loss of income. We want to pray for them. We want to pray for parents who have kids at home and they're trying to help with their homework and get everything organized. They're feeling overwhelmed. We also want to pray for teachers and students who feel uh, just feel overwhelmed uh, since their classes and activities have either been postponed or canceled. And the last area that we want to pray for, we want to pray for our local, state, uh, federal, and global leaders who are making decisions every single day. That is our responsibility as Christians, uh, that we pray for them. God has put these people in authority over us, and it's our responsibility to, to obey them as long as not... Uh, they're asking us to do anything contrary to the Word of God, but it's our responsibility to pray for our leaders and that God would give them the wisdom and that they will lead well. And so the first area to stay spiritually connected is that we're going to feed our faith, not our fear. The second way that we're going to stay spiritually connected is we're going to pray and fast. And then the third way that we're going to stay spiritually connected is this, that we need to stay connected to the church family and the spiritual family more than ever before. Uh, I want to read John 10, 10 says, The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. I want to read that one more time. John 10, 10, it says, The thief's purpose, Satan's purpose, is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's not playing games. There's a lot of us that play games, but the devil's not playing games. That he wants to he wants to steal our joy. He wants to destroy us. He wants to kill us spiritually. He wants to annihilate us when we truly are living for God. And it's so important right now, more than ever, that you don't isolate yourself. You don't pull back. It will be so easy to do that. And the reason why is because when you isolate yourself, 
you become easy prey for the devil. You become easy prey for the Satan. And it's so easy to get discouraged and let the spirit of fear or spirit of depression come over you or uh, anxiety or just, uh, just, just anger to well up in your heart. And so you need to be guarding your heart during this time. It's so important you stay connected. And a couple of things that we're doing and in uh, and ways where we want to help you to stay spiritually connected is this. Uh, to the church family. We want you to follow us on Facebook. Obviously, you're doing that already. Make sure you share this. Share this with people even that, that, that don't even go to Velocity Church. We want you to be encouraged. We want your family and your friends to be encouraged and know that there's hope today. That it's not the, it's not the end of the world. It's not doom and gloom. But God has got a purpose and a reason for everything. We're going to trust in Jesus. But we want you to like us and follow us on our Facebook page. We want you to watch our service on Sundays at 1030 and share this. And then we also, on Wednesdays, that we're starting a, a 7 p.m. Zoom interactive devotional time on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. And uh, what happens, we're going to have a link for you. You simply click on that link, and then you will be in a, uh, in a Zoom and a video chat with us. You can see our faces, and we can see your face. We can hear each, other voice, each other's voices, and we're just going to encourage each other. We're going to read the Word of God together. We're going to pray for one another during this Zoom chat and uh, this Zoom call. And we want you to come and join us for that. It's absolutely free, and, uh, and so we want you to be a part of that. We also want you, uh, if you're interested, to be part of a serve team. We are putting together a group of probably, I don't know, three to five people that would say, Hey, I, I, want, my, I, I want to serve my church. I want to serve my friends and my families in my church by calling them once or twice weekly and praying for them, checking up on them, or maybe texting them. And so if you want to be a part of this serve team and uh, you're willing just to check on two or three people and, uh, again, take ownership of them and really stay, help them to stay connected and if they see if they have any needs and just to encourage them. If you want to serve in that way, then you can go to our, our website, again, velocitychurch.cc, and uh, you'll see a, uh, a contact form. Just put your name, uh, your email, your cell phone number, and tell me, hey, Pastor Dean, I want to serve. Put that in the comments. I want to serve. And so those are a couple ways that we want to stay connected as a family. We don't want to isolate ourselves. We don't want the devil to use this time. But we want to stay connected. And if you have any other ideas or ways we can do that, we're, we, are, we want to hear from you and think about some of those ways that we can stay uh, connected during this time. And then the fourth and final way how we stay spiritually connected is that we need to continue to give financially. Uh, let me read 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 6 through 8. says this. It says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generous will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God is a person who gives cheerfully. I'm sorry, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And verse 8, listen to this, this is really important. All these are important, but it says, and God will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need, plenty left over to share with other people. Isn't that like this, this, awesome, this awesome spiritual mathematics of generosity? Is that when we give, God takes our gift and he, 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 he multiplies it. And so it's not, even, uh, not just a blessing back to us, but it, we have enough to be a blessing to other people around us. And uh, people are in need uh, during this time. I want you to know it's definitely true. Our, the church definitely needs uh, your tithe uh, when it comes to operational expenses. It's without question, we need everyone to be cheerful givers, consistent and faithful givers. But not just for to velocity. But uh, we have committed, our leadership team, we've committed 10% of our income that comes in throughout the year. We have committed 10% to give back to both missions and our local community. And so that's why we want you to be a cheerful giver. It's a blessing to our church, but it's also a blessing to our city. It's also a blessing to missionaries and different people all over the world. And, uh, and God wants to use, God's actually commanded us to tithe, and he wants to use that tithe to be a blessing uh, to people around us. And so I created a link for you on our website again for you to go to. And, uh, and to continue to give, you can set up a reincurring gift online. It's really, really simple. It's easy. You'll get a tax credit, giving credit for that. And that's simple to do. And, uh, but I want to continue to give. And so as I'm finishing up today, I just want to ask you, what area or what are these four areas uh, that you need to respond? Maybe, 
Maybe you need to start feeding your faith more and stop feeding your fear. Maybe you need to fast and pray more and maybe you haven't spent a lot of time fasting and praying for uh, for our country and for your neighbors and for your family and this is a, such a great time to start doing that. Maybe you need to connect more. Maybe if isolated yourself and pulled back away from people or uh, or the church and this is a great chance and a great time to actually step in and step towards the church family and learn to lean upon each other and learn to trust each other and, and the Bible says that you have not because you ask not maybe you need a friend and so just reach out and ask someone um, to uh, to connect with you and we'll be happy to do that I'll be happy to do that we've got a team that will be happy to do that or maybe you just need to start giving maybe you've never been a a tither, a consistent giver, this is one of the very first places you need to start after you've given your heart to Jesus Christ. You need to start being a giver, being a financial giver of your tithe, and being consistent. And let God just show you how He wants to bless your life when you become a faithful tither and faithful giver. Maybe you need to start, maybe start back up again, and maybe just be consistent. And maybe God's speaking to your heart about even giving more than what uh, your tithe. Now you're ready to give offerings because you want to be even a greater blessing. So anyway, I pray this day encourages you. Hope you stay encouraged. I am available for you. Uh, please, please call me. My cell phone number, you can call me 24-7. My cell phone number is 757-876-8631. Or you can email me, and my email address is dean at velocitychurch.cc. Again, I want to pray for you. I want to be here for you and your family. Anything you need, if you want prayer or encouragement, or if there's some way our church can help you, we want to try to do that. So uh, we love you. And thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for commenting. I hope to see you soon. And uh, we look forward to uh, for our seeing you Wednesday as we pray and fast for 24 hours from Wednesday morning to Thursday morning. And then also I hope to see you Wednesday night during our Zoom call and we get a chance to talk to each other and encourage each other and listen to God's word. God bless you. Have a great day.